What is the gospel? I can't go to any other verse that would be more simplistic than John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So in the meat of that verse, there is a concept of God having to do something. He had to give his only son. That whoever believes has eternal life. So why do we need eternal life? It's probably in contrast because we do not have eternal life. That means the opposite of life is death. So what is the bad news in contrast to the good news? Well, it's this. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we understand the basis of where we came from, if we go back to the garden, we see that God created the very first man and woman. And we see that God gave a command, Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because on that day you eat it, you will surely die. Well, we see in the pages of Genesis 1 to 3 that there has been a fall. There has been a death that occurred. God said you would die if you eat of the tree. And we see that that is the very thing that happened. So what is the problem with mankind? We're all dying. That is obvious. What is the solution for the bad news that we have? It is the very understanding of John 3.16 that whoever believes in the Son of God will have eternal life. Well, who is the Son of God? Well, we see through the Gospels that the very Son of God is the one whom it seems the whole Old Testament was looking forward to. We see the very basis of why we believe and celebrate Christmas is that God came to earth to be a man. God became a man. We see he lives this perfect life. So we see the contrast between good news and bad news. We're on the end of the bad news because we all sin. We all dying. And we see that we have a sin nature. We see that we, we lie. We see that we steal. We do all these things in our conscience that bears witness to us that we are, as Ephesians 2, 1 says, we are dead in our trespasses and sin. But we see as a continuation through Ephesians that but God is rich in mercy. So he has graciously stepped in as a man and paid our sin penalty by way of understanding the dead, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, which Everybody understands the concept of Christmas. Everybody understands the concept of Easter, that there was a beginning. God became a man. He was born by a virgin. Virgin. We see that he lived a perfect life. We see that he got crucified. Why? Because he paid our sin debt. And we see that if we believe in the gospel, which is the good news, if we believe everything that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, has done for us, we will receive eternal life. Why we need eternal life? Because we are dead in our trespasses and sins. And we look at the Ten Commandments to give us a clear understanding that we are dead in our trespasses and sins because we continue to break God's law. And we see that we can't get to heaven by the law. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved, and it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Why we can't boast? Because it's an impossibility for us to keep God's commandments. So we have to be saved by God's grace and His good news for us to have eternal life. And it is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ specifically said in John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What that is, a contrast between our condition and what he has done we go to heaven by way of jesus christ and jesus christ alone 